In the last episode, we were halfway done tearing down the 383, and we were weighing down our options to see if it was smarter to rebuild it or find ourselves another block. Shortly after I posted the video, I was offered a different block for about $500. It was just a bare block with the main caps. The unfortunate part about that block was that it was already bored out 30 over just like this one was. The good part about that was that it wasn't completely torn out on one of the cylinders. So that was my prime candidate for this rebuild. And it seemed that most of you guys actually agreed. So what we're not gonna do is do things the smart way. We're actually going to go ahead and rebuild this 383. I went ahead and cleaned up a couple more bores just to see if the overbore was going to take care of the situation. And most of these cylinders are going to survive just fine. We're gonna go all the way to the next overbore size, which is another 30 over or 60 over total. And then what we're going to do for number seven is we're going to have it sleeved and then overboard to match all the rest of them. It should work out fine. It's gonna end up a little bit more expensive. And this is definitely not my preferred method of doing things, but we're gonna go ahead and do it anyway. Before dropping this engine off at the machine shop, I have to finish tearing it down completely. I've already pulled out the crank. I've already started to pull out the core plugs. So I've got to pull out the rest of the core plugs and I've got to remove all the regular plugs like this one, like that one, the stuff that's in the back. But there are a few things that I want to do before I actually start stripping this thing down completely. So if we're going to spend the extra money to rebuild this 383, I'm going to spend the extra time to make sure this 383 survives after we put it back together. So what I'm going to do, and I've actually already started, as you can tell by some of these metal shavings, since we're probably going to be installing a high volume oil pump, I want to drill out the second, third, fourth, and fifth main bearing journal, and that'll allow extra oil flow into the main bearings as well as the rod bearings. It's a simple enough process. You just have to be very careful. I've already done two, three, and four. My last one is number five. So let's go ahead and knock that out first. So I bought this drill bit at the 440 source website. I've already used it once on my 383 big block that I built last time. I don't know where they source our drill bits, but this is the second block using the same drill bit and it's still pretty sharp. So if you look inside the oil feed holes, there's gonna be a passage that leads directly into the cam bearings. But if you look towards the right side or the passenger side, there's going to be a little channel that feeds into the oil gallery for the lifters. And that's actually where the oil supply comes from for the crankshaft. So by making that hole bigger, we're gonna reduce the restriction that leads into the crankshaft, hopefully feeding the crankshaft better and by extension feeding the rods. It takes a little bit of effort to try to find it. If you're gonna be using an electric drill, make sure you use one with a clutch because the worst thing that can happen is that as you're drilling your hole, you snap the drill bit inside of the block and that's not going to be a cheap fix. So the hardest part really is to actually get this thing started. So if you go in reverse, you can kind of feel where the center of it is. And then once you kind of figure that out, you can start going forward. So let's go ahead and go in reverse. I can feel that it's right there. So now we're going to go forward. It's going to get caught a few times, but as soon as you get that cut started, the rest of it should be pretty easy. There we go. You're gonna wanna put light pressure and you're gonna wanna keep the drill on a low speed. You're gonna wanna keep this drill bit lubricated because like I said, you definitely don't want to have this break inside the block. Most of it gets cut out pretty smooth, but toward the end, it'll get to a point where it gets caught up again, and that's gonna be the end of the channel leading into the gallery. So you're going to wanna be very careful once you get to that point that you don't go beyond that and start drilling into the gallery itself. There you go. I broke into the gallery. The trick is to keep firm pressure on it, but don't force it. Don't move it around, try to keep it as steady as possible. Let the drill bit do the work and for the most part, you should be able to get this thing handled. So now that I've made it to the other side, let's go ahead and pull it back out. Drill bit's still in one piece. I have a bunch of junk in there. I'm gonna put it on high speed. 
There we go. So now that I went ahead and finished that, once it's time to reassemble the engine, I have to make sure that I clean up that oil gallery just so I don't have any kind of crud stuck in there that could cause any problems in the future. But that's enough drilling. The next step is that we're going to go ahead and deburr the block. So deburring is when you take like a die grinder or a regular grinder and you go and take off and knock off all of this casting flash. It's all over the engine and some of it you might not be able to remove. And there's a few reasons why you would want to do this. The first one, it prevents any kind of cracks in the future. Think of a piece of paper or a leaf that's thinner on the edges and thicker on the middle. If you try to cut it straight from the middle, you're going to have a harder time than if you start on the end where it's thinner once you have a slit started at the end of it it's going to be much easier to cut through the rest of the block so in order to prevent that we're going to go ahead and knock down all of this casting flash most of it is going to be done with the die grinder but there's also casting flash on the outside such as this and that's going to be done with the regular grinder we're also going to chamfer some of the edges similar to what i've done here and just get rid of any kind of sharp corners that kind of look like this we want to get this block as smooth as we can in a reasonable amount of time this is more or less what you're looking for i took the die grinder and i knocked off some of this right here some of this casting flash there and then you can see the casting flash there and there and there but i've already knocked some of it down right there and then there we have casting flash along the main web which i've knocked down right here so this only took a couple minutes but it's going to add up very quickly the only precaution that i have for you is do not hit any of the registers and do not hit the main journals themselves with your die grinder or grinder if you think you're getting a little too close go ahead and stop and skip over that section and jump onto something else the next thing is you're not going to want to cut into the bores themselves you're probably going to have to go around the bores like right here but don't try to cut on the bores themselves a lot of times the piston doesn't even go that low and other times you have to notch this out anyway if like if you're doing a stroker kit but if you go too far and you're not paying attention you're going to have a bad day so let's not do that now we're jumping on top right here in the center web there's a couple areas down here below the lifters that i want to take care of i've already done one and this is basically what it's supposed to look like it's perfectly round no sharp edges so we're going to clean up here here this is pretty bad and there this is not too bad and then we're going to jump over to the front of the engine and then we're going to do those ones as well and then i'm also going to bevel the outside of here just like i did underneath there's an area right here that's like super jagged if i can't knock this down with a die grinder i'll do it with the regular grinder just finished up the top end and the front i've already beveled the edge here i've knocked down all this area right there so we're all good to go this looks sharper on camera than it does in person you really can't even feel it anymore in person and then i took off a lot of material right here there's there was a big old web here that i had to knock down but after i took care of it you guys can see how wide this thing got after i knocked it down a little bit so i've got no worries here at all i've also went ahead and cleaned out most of the coolant ports with the same die grinder just knocked off whatever loose cast iron that was just chilling in there and there's still some junk out there and but one thing i will say is that when i take it to the machine shop they're going to put this in the hot tank and then they're going to bead blast it so they're going to go through and they're going to basically sandblast the whole thing and that's going to soften up a lot of the edges as well i'm just trying to knock off all the stuff that i know is not going to get soft enough that way i don't have to do anything after the fact i've also done stuff up here on the deck i chamfered the edge of the deck here i've knocked down some casting right along here and then i've cleaned up the coolant passages as well here here there and the one behind that light another gander of the stuff that i did on the inside and it's looking pretty good so pretty happy with this the last thing to do is now to shave off the outside which is going to be here here a lot of here and then obviously flip it over to the other side i'm not going to use a die grinder this area is just too large for the die grinder so we're going to be using a flap wheel and a grinder for this next section i think i've got most of the deburring done here is a good example of what we're working with right there and then another good example right here a little bit up here up top once you start cutting it, you're gonna start seeing the imperfections of the blocks. This was actually a hole, so when I shaved over on top, the hole was exposed. I went ahead and shaved through here. You can see all the shiny areas where I deburred the edge. If we jump over to the back, 
You can see that I've cleaned up here. I've got to hit this a little bit with the die grinder just to soften this up. For the most part, it's done. I went ahead and deburred the entire edge here, shaved off a section of casting here. This spot was really nasty, so I went ahead and I shaved off a chunk right here. And then this part right here was extremely nasty. I shaved this entire area here, there, all of this corner right here, and then a little bit up there. So now that I've finished this, I'm going to hit a couple areas with the die grinder. I'm going to pull off the core plugs. I'm gonna pull off the regular plugs right here in the front. Then we're gonna take it off the engine stand, pull off the plugs that are in the rear. And that should be everything. I'm gonna save the cleaning and the chasing of the threads for whenever this block comes back. I don't wanna clean them and then have a bunch of junk go inside of it when it gets blasted and then have to clean them again. I'd rather just do it once and get it over with. I'm also gonna have the machine shop knock out the cam bearings because some of these looked a little worn out. So I'm gonna replace all the cam bearings, but I'm gonna have the machine shop pull those out for me. And then I've gotta put the main caps back on without the bearings. So that way the entire bottom end is installed when the block gets tone so that's going to take probably a couple weeks to a couple months so next week we're going to jump on to another project temporarily so hopefully by the time that project is done i'll be able to jump back onto the engine and we'll get right back onto that 70 challenger so i will see you guys all in the next one night wrencher signing out